Hey, uh, before we get started, just a quick question from future Matt. I added some incidental music to this part, and I just want you guys to uh, let me know whether or not you hate it. So, uh, yeah, we'll uh, continue now with the regularly scheduled part. Okay, it's time for Jerry and the Goddesses, part 16. Shit, Jerry, I'm pretty sure you didn't miss, and I think of the two of us, I'm a bit more qualified to judge. But there's only one bullet hole, I said, peering through the binoculars, then looking back at my shooting instructor. Yup, Gary said, spitting a stream of tobacco juice out the side of his mouth. Think it through, kid. I thought it through. Wait, you think I put all five bullet er, rounds through one hole? That's good, right? Gary laughed. Yeah, that's good. Look at the hole. It's missing some paper in the middle. A single round will usually just rip a hole, but you put a couple of them in with overlapping pattern, you see missing paper like that. I checked again. He was right. There was some paper missing. I felt the swell of pride rise up in me. Gary had been telling me all day that I had a knack for shooting, but I hadn't really believed him until now. He was just so much better at it than I was. The range we were at was equipped with several tactical ranges that were full of obstacles and had moving handles to attach targets to. We'd spent most of the morning on those, Gary blasting through them like those Keanu Reeves videos, only faster and somehow still smoother. He kept telling me the only way to get that fast was to move slow, but I'm only half convinced that slow is smooth, smooth is fast isn't some kind of a joke at my expense. Meanwhile, whenever it was my turn, I'd been fumbling around, dropping clips, sorry, magazines, and even my gun from time to time, missing every fourth or fifth shot and just generally making an ass out of myself. There were other guys here, too. Big, bearded guys who looked like they could eat me for breakfast. They watched Gary shoot his way through the course with nodding respect, then watched me stumble through, trying not to laugh. I tried to remind myself that I probably knew about 50 times as much military history as the lot of them put together, but it didn't really help me feel like less of a screw-up. When I'd embarrassed myself enough on those courses, or, according to Gary, when I'd shown some real improvement... We went on to shooting at range. I had what looked like an M16 with an extra long barrel and I'd started shooting at 50 yards. As soon as I got five rounds in a row through the bullseye, he had me move to a 100-yard target. We repeated that, each one taking longer and longer until we got to this one at 300 yards. So now what? I asked. The range didn't have any further targets. Now, Gary told me, we go back to the tactical course. I groaned. At least this kind of shooting wasn't as embarrassing. But Gary certainly knew what he was doing, and he'd assured me that the training that training paramilitaries had been in his bailiwick back when he was still in the army, so I deferred to his judgment. Joy, I said, remembering to engage the safety on my rifle, finally. Maybe I'll accidentally shoot myself in the foot so the other guys can stop humoring me and just laugh. You think they're humoring you by not laughing? Gary asked, frowning at me. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm clearly no good at this stuff, and you and all of them are like the world's best. Gary grinned and wrapped an arm around my neck, pulling me in uncomfortably and squeezing. Ha <laughs> ha! Let's go tell them how bad you are, okay? I groaned again. Great. We made our way back to the tactical ranges. Hey, Bill, Gary called as we approached. Jerry here wants y'all to go ahead and laugh at him. What fur? The oldest fella asked. He was tall and skinny like me, but he had skin like old leather and a big, mostly gray beard that looked like you could crack walnuts against it. Well, because he's no good at shooting, I guess, Gary answered. The old guy shrugged and spat tobacco juice. Maybe if I started chewing tobacco, that would make me tougher. Better than he was this morning, Bill said. How many people here could shoot a one-inch group at 300 yards their first day of marksmanship? Gary asked. Raise a hand. He looked at me for a second. Well, put your hand up, kid. I raised my hand. None of the others followed suit. You see, Gary said, giving me a long-suffering look. I don't know where you lost your spine, kid, but there ain't a damn thing wrong with your shooting. You ain't been here but a couple hours, and you can already outshoot almost every grunt I ever met. So quit your damn whining and whinging and just focus on honing that obvious fucking talent you got. Shit, the whole point is to try and keep you alive. You'd think you'd be a bit enthusiastic about it. I nodded. 
I'm sorry, Gary. You're right. I'll stop complaining. Let's do this. Bill grinned. Damn straight, kid. You're here to kick ass and chew bubblegum. And we're all out of bubblegum, the ref shouted at one. I grinned. I hadn't really expected anything but scorn from any of these guys, but they actually seemed pretty cool. And maybe Gary was right and I did have some talent for it. I'd always been really good at shooting games. Just then I heard a low whistle and one of the guys said, Well, hello, nurse, while another one muttered, Oh, sweet baby, Jesus. I looked up and Sarissa and Anana were there. Clearly they weren't disguising their normal nudity from these guys. Ladies, do you need some blankets? Bill asked, a fatherly concern in his eyes. He must have daughters. We're fine, Sarissa said. Jerry, we have to go. We found the guy who summoned Astoram and he's looking for you. He was in Haymarket 15 minutes ago. I gaped at her. That was close, like three miles from us close. Holy shit, I said. Yeah, and Anna added. So let's go. Gary, I'll help you gather everything up. Gunfire erupted. Not the random staccato pops I'd been hearing all day from the other shooters, but loud, thunderous automatic fire. I screamed and ducked, which turned out to be a smart move because Gary threw himself on top of me and this made the impact a little easier. I looked up and saw Bill go down in, a, in an expanding pink mist, his shirt jerking around chaotically. The other guys had dropped to the ground and were sending space shots back in the direction of the machine gun sound. Somebody give me a fucking vector, Gary shouted, his mouth close enough to my ear to make me wince. No clue, somebody shouted back. Somewhere on the ridge line's about 500 yards, someone else added. Just suppress the ridge line and we'll try to get mobile. Come around at a better angle. Shit, Gary muttered. Jerry, stay put. I don't think he can get an angle on you down here. Gary got up. I looked in the direction they'd been shooting in. A wooden ridge line was there with a big chunk of it obscured by a concrete armory building from where I was. The rest of the ridge was visible, however. I spot immediately spotted the flaw in Gary's plan. Gary, I yelled, panic keeping me from talking normally. We need to get behind that building. All that guy's got to do is move left or right and he'll have the angle on us again. Gary looked at me, surprised for a second, then nodded. Everybody get in cover behind the armory, he shouted. Then he began firing rapidly towards the ridge. The others headed for the building and I got to my feet and joined them. Hey, my underwear was dry. How about that? I looked around for Anana and Sarissa, but they were nowhere to be seen. I caught a glimpse of black smoke and a flash of tentacles running towards the ridge. Ixie was on the warpath. Right as I had the thought, the creature, the creature let loose a howl that almost ruined my enjoyment of dry underwear, even knowing that he wasn't coming for me. I realized then that the machine gun fire had stopped. I carefully peeked up through a window. I could see another window on the other side and through that the ridge, but nothing stood out to me at first. After a second, I caught a flash of black smoke, and a second or so later, I heard a snarl. More machine gun fire sounded, and I thought I caught flashes in the forest. The end.